one thing that you emphasize a lot is this idea of rule of law and institutions. And I think, I feel that this is an idea that has gained traction in the past years. I remember some research by um, Daniel Roderick saying about institutions and saying institutions trump everything and trump geography and that's what's the most important. But in the conclusion, what he said also was we don't, what we measure is how, how people see whether or not their rights are secure, but we don't exactly know what is the set of institutions exactly that are necessary and that enable those rights. And so if we shift from an aid, uh, food aid, for instance, to a aid where we're gonna send consultants to help uh, build the right institutions, thinking that we know what the right institutions are, um, isn't, aren't we just like creating a new problem, a new social fact that has also um, pernicious effects? And so, well, one conclusion could be, well then there is maybe no room for aid, maybe we should just do nothing. Um, or maybe, but I remember also another, an article, I don't remember by whom, saying um, maybe that the best argument for aid is that we have so much and they have so little. And so, we need, maybe, whatever we have to do, we need to do it. And so maybe, and that's a question, do you think that some, the initiatives that um, consist in giving directly money to poor people, uh, I don't know exactly how efficient they are, but do you think that they might be the best solution, not being agnostic about how to do, just give them money and they'll try to do the best as they can? You know, these are, these are not simple issues, right? And, and how, how, you know, economic history and how, eco how economies developed and like, so when, when did the beginning of market economies happen? You know, like ninth century Italy, Amsterdam, cities beginning to develop, what we call, you know, the beginnings of capitalism and things like this. So these things are happening there. But I think the, the, the one thing I'd say about institutions that I think you make a really good point is like, we focused here in the film, and again, the film is, is limited on certain kind of core institutions, clear title to land, access to justice in the courts, ability to register a business, and access to circles of exchange, networks of productivity and free exchange. Now, I think one of the big problems is that when we talk about poverty, we say, oh, you know, what are the things that will eradicate poverty? Education, healthcare, and, and infrastructure. Well, okay, that's true, but education, infrastructure, and healthcare are the result of wealth before they become the cause of wealth. Right, if you look at like how economies develop, you don't have massive infrastructure and educational and healthcare systems, and then you get wealthy. You get those after you get wealthy, and then this kind of acts like a multiplier. So one of the, my big concern, like, and I think you're raising it, is what do we mean by institutions? And the last thing we need is you know more kind of Davos intelligentsia coming down and creating all these institutions with with um, with uh, consultants. Uh, because that's, that's actually not addressing the fundamental kind of issues of, of economic history. Part of the problem with the film, I think, is, is, is that it's not a very sexy solution, pardon the vulgarity, right? This is not a celebrity campaign. More title, right? I mean, like, it's just like, can you imagine everybody wearing a wristband saying, like, let's get better title for poor people, right? I mean, so that is part of the problem. Mistake. What? It may also be a mistake. Well, I don't know. Places. Maybe. It's very complex, right? But it's not that complex. I mean, generally speaking, creating title, like the effects of title, are, have more impact than economic. So Shargotsky and Raphael Detella at Harvard did a study on how private property actually changes worldview, has a positive impacts on education, teenage pregnancy rates, et cetera, et cetera. So I mean, there are a lot of debate. This is not, none of this is, is, is I think, clear cut. But I think you're, you're right to be wary about just kind of like, institutions alone and what do we mean by those and everything's an institution. I mean, I think related to that is this relationship between institutions and culture, which is very complex. So Asimo and Robinson and Why Nations Fail, um, you know, I think is a very interesting book, a lot of the stuff of North and other things, but I think they make a little bit of a naive uh, demarcation between culture and institutions, as if somehow culture is just what you eat as opposed to culture, as opposed to institutions developing out of culture. And if you look at, for example, the West, where do institutions 
like private property develop. I mean, it's coming from a lot of different sources. It comes from the Hebrew Bible, from Genesis 23, and whole debates about why Abraham wants title for, his, for, for Sarah and his burial place uh, through the Decalogue and on. It comes from Roman law, from whole Greek things, from Germanic. I mean, this is not like it didn't just happen. Okay? And I think this is part of the kind of hubris that we're going to, the tyranny of experts, as it were, that we're going to go down and just impose institutions. So I think that's, you know, uh, uh, an issue.